So about a week or so ago, I had a dude leave a comment, en français, uh, on one of my videos saying that, uh, well, they, uh, like everyone else on this whole planet, liked my videos. And I figured, since we have confirmed that there is at least one French viewer watching these videos, uh, that I would do a French cartridge this week. Uh, however, not just any French cartridge, but, uh, perhaps the most coolest cartridge ever devised. What's up, guys? Skippy Africanus here, and welcome back to another Cartridge of the Week episode, this week featuring the venerable 8mm label. Uh, not to be confused, of course, with the 8mm label, as this one is it's more specific the 8x50mm label. So now before we go into this cartridge, we will of course do what we always do and take a look at the head stamp. Which on the left you can see we have SF and on the right we have the letter I with SF standing for Société Française de Munitions de Issy les Moulineaux uh, or French Association for Munitions of uh, Issy les Moulineaux. And the I standing for Société de Metallurgie Franco-Belge de Issy de Moulin... Molunio, uh, or Franco-Belgian Metallurgic Society of Issy les Moulineaux, uh, which uh, those were the guys that actually supplied the metal to the former SF. And then turning the cartridge a little bit that way, we can see a 4 and a 48, standing for the fourth quarter of 1948 for uh, this uh, specific cartridge's year production. Now, the 8mm label has quite a few variants. However, specific to this one, which is the ball end, this cartridge features a 131 grain lead core with a bimetal jacket bullet flying at around 2300 feet per second. Now, as mentioned, there are quite a few variants and there's quite a few commercial manufacturers. However, bullet weight does tend to be around the 200 or so grain mark, flying around the 23 to 2400 feet per second mark. Now, as mentioned before, the 8mm Bell is uh, hands down one of my most favorite cartridges of all time. I mean, for starter, every single gun made for this caliber looked and, you know, in general, was friggin' cool. I mean, you got the LaBelle, the RSC, the Shosha, the Hotchkiss, and a few others that I'm, of course, forgetting about. Uh, like, I don't know what made the French decide to give this caliber, like, some of the coolest looking guns ever made, but whatever it was, it went away when this round was replaced by the uh, next thing that dropped. However, the 8mm LaBelle is cool for many more reasons other than just the guns that used it. This round was, at the time, the absolute cutting edge of military technology, being the first cartridge to employ smokeless powder, and not only that, but also to use a Spitzer bullet. Uh, however, upon its initial release, it would be outfitted with a non-Spitzer bullet in a cartridge referred to as Ball M, featuring a 232 grain bullet that nose was flattened to make operation in the tubular magazines a little more safe. However, this bullet design would not last, uh, I mean, it would only last for about really three years, until they would go to Ball D, the one featuring the 198 grain Spitzer projectile. Now one might wonder, how do you exactly, you know, use a Spitzer bullet safely inside a tubular magazine, given, you know, you got that pointy bullet right there, and it'll be sitting up against primers like that. Definitely seems like some room for accidental detonation if, you know, the recoil's a bit stout. And indeed, there's been cartridges that have, you know, more of a rounded taper and, uh, they still manage to, you know, set off inside the magazine, aside from various military trials where that happened. That actually happened to Ian McCollum. Uh, I don't remember what caliber. I assume it was 45 Long Colt. It was one of those calibers, uh, and it was in one of the Henry rifles. Of course, it wasn't from Recoil. Uh, he's got a video. You can check it out. But anyways, you do got to be careful with the bullet tip contacting the primer, and especially if it's going to be pointy like this. Now, given all that, the Ball D introduced, of course, a solution. That being that on the head stamp, you will notice this circle surrounding the primer. And what that circle does is keep the pointed tips of the bullets stuck inside of it, not allowing them to go anywhere near the primer while they're sitting inside the tubular magazine. Now, other care was taken with both Ball D and a little later Ball D AM, where they would sink the primer lower for better use with machine guns, and they were where they would also add a primer cover just to give the LaBelle a little bit more of an added safety to it. However, with all these changes mentioned, we aren't done modifying the cartridge just yet because this cartridge in particular, as mentioned, is not ball M or D, but rather it is ball N, which was specifically designed for better use in the Hotchkiss machine guns in order to give them better range. And of all the changes made thus far, this one in some ways has the most important change 
made yet. And that specific change being a slight increase in neck diameter. And this is important as unless you have a Berthier or LaBelle with an end marking, then this cartridge would actually be dangerous to shoot in those rifles as the rifles with the end marking had the chamber reamed out just a tad bit to accommodate for the wider neck. Now ball end is actually very easily identified by using a magnet as it actually incorporates steel with the jacket, uh, not common for the earlier variants. All that being said, ball end was a great improvement when it came to the long range capabilities of machine guns. However, even it was outdated with the introduction of 7.5 by 54 millimeter. The 7.5 would come around in 1929 and although a great cartridge, much better than the 8 millimeter LaBelle, the only thing that kept this cartridge in service was cost. Um, again, the 7.5 was a great cartridge. However, the cost, you know, rebarrel various guns and then add a whole new cartridge to the production line, especially after the end of World War One, when plenty of countries really didn't want to do much, you know, small arms development and, you know, remanufacturing and all that. Although 7.5 is a great round, as mentioned, uh, France took a look at, you know, all these guns. They have an 8mm LaBelle and they fit, saw it being cheaper just to, you know, Let's just improve the cartridge. So that's what they did, which is why you'll see the ball end come into, you know, production in like the mid to late 30s. But anyways, I think that's going to do it for this week's Cartridge of the Week episode featuring the 8x50 millimeter LaBelle. I uh, hope you all enjoyed the video as much as I personally enjoyed making it, and I will see y'all next time.